Living Temple Kids friends, welcome everyone! We will have a very fun day today as we continue our lesson series called Compass. But before that, let's play a game. Our game today is called No See Drawing. You will need three pieces of paper and something to draw with. We will give you some time to grab your things. Do you kids have your supplies? Great! Here's how we play it. I am going to call out something to draw and when I say go, we draw it. But here's the catch. You can't look at your paper. You are free to use your imagination. Are you up for the challenge? Good. Let's practice round one. When I say go, let's draw a fish. Ready? Go! So, first, we'll have the body of the fish and then a little gills on the side and also don't forget the fins and of course, the eye of the fish, the mouth. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm nervous. Kids, here's my drawing! Is it a fish? How about yours? I want to see your output. Parents and guardians, we want to see your kids' drawing. And please put it in the comment section or message us at our Living Temple Facebook page. Now, who's up for round two? Alright kids, this time, let us draw a bear. Go! So now we'll have the head of the bear, the body, some cute fingers and hands and legs and of course don't forget the ears and the eyes, nose and the mouth and five, four, three, two, one. So let's see. Oh my! Here's my bear! How is it? It's so cute. I want to see your bear. And now for the last round. Round 3. This will be a little harder, kids. But I know you can do this. Let us draw a car. Go. So this time we have the hood, the wheels, the compartment, the body of the car. Don't forget the windows. And of course the wheels and the lights. And the little antenna for the radio. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's see our car. How is it, kids? So cute. I want to see your car too. So parents, drop them at the Living Temple Facebook page. It was great playing with you all today, Living Temple Kids friends. In our scripture in Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 to 30, we'll look at King Belshazzar's life, son of King Nebuchadnezzar. Let us check our story today. Many years passed. And Daniel, now an older man, was still in service to the kingdom of Babylon when a new king, Belshazzar, came into power. King Belshazzar decided to host a great banquet for thousands of his leaders. During the feast, King Belshazzar had his servants bring out the gold and silver goblets that his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. As the king and his nobles drank from these sacred goblets, they praised false gods. Suddenly, a human hand appeared, and one finger began to write on the wall right in front of everyone at the feast. As King Belshazzar watched, he began to shake in fear. The king called for his wise men and said, Whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means, I will give them riches and power. But the wise men could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. This made the king even more terrified. Hearing the commotion, the queen came into the banquet hall and said, Don't be alarmed. There is a man who can help you. 
He was trusted by King Nebuchadnezzar because of his great insight and wisdom. So much so that Nebuchadnezzar put him in charge of all of Babylon's wise men. His name is Daniel, and if you bring him here, he will be able to tell you what this writing means. When Daniel appeared before King Belshazzar, the king told him, None of my wise men can read the writing on the wall and tell me what it means. But if you can, I will give you riches and honor beyond your wildest dreams. Daniel answered the king, You can keep your gifts and give them to someone else, but I will still read the writing for you and tell you what it means. Daniel told King Belshazzar, God gave your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, absolute power, glory, and splendor. Because of this, all the nations of the earth feared him. He did as he pleased to help or hurt anyone he chose. But Nebuchadnezzar became proud and arrogant, so God stripped him of his throne and his power. Only after this did King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledge that God alone is king over all the earth. But you, King Belshazzar, Daniel continued, have not humbled yourself, even though you knew all of this. Instead, you have become proud and honored yourself above God. When you brought out the goblets from God's temple, you drank from them and praised false gods who cannot see or hear or understand. In all of this, you did not honor God or his hand in your life. Because of this, God sent the hand and wrote the inscription. My king, Daniel said, this the inscription says, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parson. Mene means numbered. God has numbered your days and brought them to an end. Tackle means weighed. You have been weighed on the scales and you have been found wanting. Parson means divided. Your kingdom is divided and will be given to the Medes and Persians. Just as the king had promised, Daniel was dressed in wealth. That very night, King Belshazzar was killed, and his kingdom was given over to another ruler. Today, we are going to be talking about the reputation of being humble. We learned that it is best to be humble and honor God, rather than being boastful and act selfishly. Let us check our Bible verse. Hello, Living Temple Kids friends. The Bible is God's Word, and there is power in God's Word. Say it out loud, kids. Say, the Bible, power. It's time to learn our Bible verse for today. Our verse is found in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 10. It says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. James chapter 4, verse 10. Say it with me this time, kids. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. James chapter 4, verse 10. Let's do it again, but this time, I want to hear your robot voices. Ready? Go! Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. James chapter 4, verse 10. Amazing job, Living Temple Kids friends. You are way smarter than a robot. Let's say it one last time. Ready? Go! Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. James chapter 4, verse 10. Great job, Living Temple boys and girls. Are you kids ready to worship Jesus? Would you stand with me as we get our hearts and our minds ready to worship our God? Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. Then, 
Let's raise our arms like this and let's pray this together. God, we welcome your presence today. Have your way in us.
couldn't even see, hear, or understand. Absolutely, you're wrong, teacher Roxanne. Belshazzar's sin is even greater than his father. In our scripture today, in Daniel 5, verses 22 to 23, it says that although he knew the truth, he chose to be boastful and not to humble himself and even fought against the Lord. Teacher Roxanne, what is being boastful? Humble. Boastful is being full of oneself. Humble is being meek and modest. Here, I have an activity for us today. Let us go through the scenario here to see whether one is being humble or boastful. Jenny looked at the other girls in her virtual class. None of them had a nice dress as she did. She couldn't wait for someone to notice. So, she told how pretty her dress was. Was Jenny being boastful or humble? Hey, let me think, teacher Roxanne. I think Jenny was being boastful. You're right, Tony. Jenny was boastful because she looked at outward appearances. She thought that her dress was better than the other girls' dresses and went out her way to tell others how pretty it was. Here, do the next one, Tony. Here's the scenario. Leo knew his parents were wealthy. He always got money to buy snacks he wanted. But all of his friends said Leo didn't act rich. Even share some with his friends. What do you think, Tony? Was Lino boastful or humble? Hmm. I think it's your Roxanne. Lino was humble because although that was siya, pero wala siya nagpakadato. So Lino was also generous. Great job, Tony! Now I understand what's being boastful and humble, teacher Roxanne. And I'm sorry for bragging about my award earlier. It's okay, Tony. We have learned now that a reputation is built by doing something over and over. To have a reputation for being humble, we must constantly honor and give thanks to God for all things. There will be many times in our lives that we will have more than someone else have a newer toy than the kid down the street or get a better grade than our friends but we must never look down on someone else because they are less fortunate likewise we should never think that whatever it is we have is because something we did all good things come from god and we alone is worthy of our praise can we pray together let us ask God to help us constantly honor and give Him thanks for all things. Father God, let us humbly submit ourselves to You. Help us remember always that all good things come from You and You alone are worthy of our praise. Do not let us think more highly of ourselves than we should. Brother, let us rejoice with gifts and talents you have given us. May we use these gifts to honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. When night is falling, when fear is calming, still you're calling me. Faith is lost and my hope exhausted. You will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me.
Today, we learned that it is best to be humble and honor God rather than being boastful and act selfishly. Live in Temple Kids, friends! Ever hear of a shark repellent? How about a man-eating lion repellent? Come back next week to see if there is such a thing. May you have a great week ahead. We'll see you here next time. God bless you all.